Hey everybody, it's Jennifer Berry, and we are here today with the 29 Minute Mom, where we know every single busy minute counts, and I have a very special guest today. Um, you know that I don't always do video, but today's a special occasion, so I actually Aww. did my makeup and did my hair from working at home, which is usually the days I do not do that. So I want to just welcome Trista Sutter to the show. Thank you. So glad you're here. I know it's been a long time in the works, and I'm just glad we finally nailed you down. <laughs> <laughs> a long time in the works. I mean, for everyone listening or watching, Jennifer reached out to me, I think, a year or two ago, <laughs> and uh, it took me that long to respond. I feel like it was just at a time when I was super busy, and then I just can't get caught up. So I think all the moms out there can relate, probably. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially this year. Especially. Yeah, right? <laughs> so true. I think our I think right now we're just kind of in that mental state where we're like, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> One foot in front of the other. Just keep going. <laughs> yep. Figuring out our new normal. Our new uh -huh. normal. So um, for anybody that does not know you, I just want to make sure that they realize that you are the very, very, very first bachelorette in history, right? From Bachelor Nation, yeah. and it, you are a mom of two, Blakesley and Max. How old are they now? 13 and 11. Oh, you have a teenager. <gasps> Although he's easy, he's actually easy. So having a boy first is probably good, at least for me, like just to kind of get into it. Although Blakesley's 11 and she's already starting to hit puberty. So the attitude is happening and the short fuse and the, mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I'm not looking forward to it. No, trust me. It, I, we have a girl first. So we, I feel like now that we, our son's a teenager, it's going to be, we're going to coast. <laughs> ah, you're, you got it. Easy. Yeah. yeah. A lot <laughs> less drama with boys is what I've learned. So much less drama. Yeah. Especially with mine, I feel like I'm really thankful because Max, he is Ryan's personality. Um, and Ryan is super chill and introverted and like doesn't even like to talk. So I feel like, um, you know, Max is right in there with him and the no drama is really good for me right now. Yeah. Or anytime, really. <laughs> yeah. But you know what's interesting as a mom of a daughter and a son? I feel like with the daughter, it's always harder because I put myself in her shoes. Like you can easily go back to 11, 13, 16, and you almost remember how hard it is. And so with my son, I'm just not able to relate as much to that growing up, you know, in those different right. stages of life. Yeah. I've never thought about it like that, but you're right. Um, I definitely do empathize with her mm -hmm. and a lot a lot of like the friend drama especially you know just dealing with other people and max that just kind of there's no friend drama it just he doesn't put any time or effort into any drama so there's never any drama to worry about but blakesley is more of a sensitive sensitive soul like me and takes a lot of things personally and you know it's, it's hard. Life's hard sometimes, especially when you're a teenager. <laughs> yes, it is. And when you're a mom of a teenager. <laughs> and when you're a mom of a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so how, how long have you and Ryan been married now? Almost 17 years. 17 years. Congratulations. Thank you. So um, I was looking, you know, doing some research. I was trying to figure out how many couples from Bachelor Nation are married now. Do you have any idea? So we've got Sean and Catherine, Jason and Molly, um, Ashley and JP are technically still married, <laughs> um, but unfortunately they're going to be splitting, um, or they are splitting. Um, Desiree and Chris, did I say, I think I said Sean and Catherine. Yeah, I, um, I remember that. Right. Jade and Tanner, Carly and Evan. Oh, they're so cute. So cute, right? Oh my gosh, I just texted her or messaged her because she just posted something uh, with her daughter or about her daughter. And oh my gosh, she's the cutest thing ever. And Jake kids, like, I, I just love everyone's babies. They're so adorable. 
Um, and then, of course, like the, there's Caitlin and Jason who are dating, um, Jojo and Jordan who are going to be getting married soon. Um, you know, there's, there's a good, I feel like there's a good number. For a while, there was a bit of a drought yeah. in between us and Jason and Molly. And then once um, Ashley and JP got married, then it was like, bam, 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 bam. So I feel like we've had um, in Bachelor Nation a bit more success re more recently than mm -hmm. in the past. Do you feel um, like a lot of pressure being the first um, Bachelorette just as being kind of like a mentor for the women that are going through this? I don't feel pressure. I mean, I definitely love connecting with everyone. We're on a bachelorette group text chain and it's just, it's just fun to connect with them, especially because I could literally be their mother. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them. I am so old compared to some of them that if I had had a baby young, yeah. You know, yeah. or I could be like besties with their mom instead of them, you know, right. it's like, it's, it's kind of crazy thinking about that, but I love connecting with them. Um, I, I don't, I don't really feel pressure to, um, to be a role model. I just kind of live my truth in my life and, and so far it's worked out. <laughs> yeah. I think that's probably one of the coolest things. I, I remember watching your season. I've watched a sub up. I Feel like I've watched more of the past like right when it started seasons and I have up today yeah um, although I did wear watch Claire's um couple episodes just to like get me back in the groove of the best yeah yeah <laughs> um which I know I always liked her so much so um but I feel like one of the things thinking about this reality tv show that's been around for so long that me as a woman, I think the coolest thing is this tribe of bachelorettes because you guys do so much together. And even your video that just came out where you guys were throwing the rose to each other. I was like, yeah. oh, there's been so many. I know. Um, and the fact that you all seem so connected and you stay in touch and you get to watch each other, like you said, kids grow up and stuff like that. I think that might be the coolest part for me to watch. For me too. I mean, obviously the coolest thing to come out of it is Ryan yeah. and our relationship but um the friendships are definitely a close second i love we you know we all kind of um met up i hadn't i hadn't met some of them until last year when we had our bachelorette reunion oh and rachel and brian i actually forgot about them they're married okay. too um but you know i i had just met rachel i just met becca um jojo and I just, I, I love human interaction. I love human connection. And, um, the fact that I get to connect with all these people who i I probably never would have met otherwise mm -hmm. is, is a really, really sweet thing to come out of it. Yeah. That's amazing. Really, really amazing. Um, how do you feel like, what's the biggest thing that has changed over all these years of the show? Have, do you feel like it's pretty similar to when you were on it or does it seem different to you now? Sometimes. I mean, obviously the staple Chris Harrison, gotta love that guy. Um, so he'll, he'll never age and never change. And hopefully he'll always be part of the show and it will keep going for years and years and years and years or decades. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, like the phrases that are used on the show, uh, the right reasons, will you accept this rose? You know, there are a lot of those kind of things that will always be part of the show. Um, one, I think big change is, I was just talking about this yesterday with someone that, so, you know, there is this assumption that, and I haven't watched the episode from Tuesday night yet, mind you. So I don't know what happened in, on Tuesday. I like to be surprised. I don't like to like get the, get the scoop, yeah. although I probably could. Um, so uh, you know, the fact that all these rumors are spinning that she left the show early to, you know, go be with Dale or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I am so happy for her. I, all I want is her happiness. But if she had been shooting when I shot, there is no way they would have let me just stop the show and, and leave with someone, you right. know, like there were specific rules. You had a contract, like you had to, you had to go through 
to the end. Mm -hmm. And I think honestly, like it's, it's, um, for someone like me who didn't have a love at first sight experience, like Mm -hmm. I had like at first sight and I uh, like at first sight. And I liked, you know, a a few guys right out the gate, like, Oh yeah, I got to keep my eye on him. But I, I needed to go through the entire process to know who was my guy. Yeah. And, you know, it seems like if the rumors are true and it seems like what she's feeling is that Dale is her guy, then if she leaves, like that is a huge change because never before has someone left early Mm -hmm. um, to pursue a certain relationship. And so I think they're, you know, I think they, they kind of go with the flow and they have the ability to pull another bachelorette to continue on with the show that they've already started. Whereas earlier back in the day, they would have been like, oh God, no, like you're screwing up our format or whatever. Um, Right. So I think that's one big thing is that the editors and the, sorry, the producers are realizing that um, it's probably better to just go with the flow and let it happen naturally and follow along and not just, you know, throw down the gavel or the hammer and say, we've got to do it this way. Um, Because that's where the drama and the magic kind of happens. So I think that's a, that's a big change. Um, Besides like the travel, which we didn't get to travel a lot. And obviously Claire didn't either, but obviously Claire's doing it in a different, you know, time. Um, but up until Claire's season, they were traveling literally so many fantastic places. And I'm like, I got to go to Seattle and yeah. Cabo. Well, yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you're, what you're saying, it's, it's almost even more reality now where. So, I mean, if it's true. Template. Yeah. If this whole, if all the rumors are true, you know, then, um, I mean, we have to wait and see what, what actually happens, but, but yeah, you, I, I think that what they're realizing is that, you know, following along with the actual reality is probably more interesting now because they've done it for so long with the format, like sticking to the format. So they're realizing, huh, to kind of up the game and change things up to keep people's interest levels alive. Maybe if they change things up, it'll, it'll be cool. Right. Right. Yeah. Very interesting. So do you have days where you're just watching like say Claire's episode and you have to like, like it's hard because now you're a mom and you have this different kind of lifestyle that you're like, I can't believe I was actually the first bachelorette and I can't believe how much has happened since then? Oh, for sure. I mean, I was driving in the car today and um, Ryan Seacrest was on talking about uh, his top 40 thing that I think he does on the weekends. And he's like, and our special guest will be Claire Carley from The Bachelorette. And I, I was like, it was kind of an out of body experience. It wasn't me, obviously, but I'm thinking, I know her. She's a bachelorette. Like, it's so weird that I'm driving down the road, taking my kids to school and listening to a guy who I was on his show and I I know him and then I know Claire and The Bachelorette and it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely still strange. Yeah. For sure. I, I, I never would have envisioned uh, my life being what it is and being who I am, you know, not to say that I'm anything fantastic. I just, you know, the fact that people know me and stop us in airports or send us messages, you know, name their kids after us. It's just, (laughs) it's crazy. (laughs) Um, and, and so sweet. And I, I am truly thankful for the, Mm -hmm. for the opportunity and the, and the ability to be part of the show. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, so much has happened since you were the bachelorette. You have a whole another, yeah. you know, a whole bunch of things on your list. I was looking at um, your website and there's a few things I want to talk about. One thing I just, I have always been really um, curious about TED Talks and I was, mm-hmm. I love, I just want to say this. You can say what you want about your TED Talk experience, but I want you to know watching it, it was so refreshing to see you be completely real um, about the fact that you 
were asked to do a TED talk and in your mind, you thought, I'm just a mom. So what am I going to say? I love that because when you were saying it, people were glued because they want to know that you're real and they want to, you know, get something out of your talk and be inspired by it. But I think it's also really nice to, for people to realize that not everybody has it all figured out. So um, that TED Talk was really awesome. How did you like doing it? Thank you. It was, it was a really cool experience. Another one of those things that I never would have assumed that I'd get to be part of. Um, Ryan at the time was a huge TED Talk fan, huge. He watched them all the time. It's kind of like the podcast world now. Like mm -hmm. he, he's now fully invested in the podcasts. Um, so he was on a gondola ride and, um, the, the person who coordinates TEDx Vale was in the gondola with him. So obviously it's a very small space and she was with her, some friends and she was talking to them. Oh, well, we're doing this TEDx Vale and it's going to be all about gratitude. And I just need people to talk. Like, do you guys know anybody that I could have as, as a speaker? And Ryan was like, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to you know, like invade your conversation, but it's kind of hard not to hear what you're saying. Since such small. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he's like, my wife actually just wrote a book about gratitude. And he's like, oh, well, she's like, oh, well, who's your wife? And so, you know, one thing led to another and I ended up doing it. But um, I, it's interesting because everyone thinks that because I'm okay with the cameras, that I'm okay public speaking and holy cow, it's a way different ball game. Like yeah. you, when you're sitting in front of a camera or just talking to a producer, you're not really seeing the eyeballs. You're not seeing anyone's eyeballs <laughs> looking at you, like glaring at you thinking you're being judged, you know? So, um, yes, I know that we're being judged constantly when you put yourself out there that comes with the territory. But when you're standing in front of a amphitheater full of eyeballs that are like judging you, you know, it's, it's a whole different ball game and really, really stressful, especially when you have to do it within a sp specific period of time. So it was incredibly stressful, but it was so rewarding and so fulfilling. And, and I was so happy to be able to, put that out there and let other moms know that it is okay to like actually stand up for yourself and not belittle what you're doing because it's the most important job on the planet, you know? Um, and I, I need that reminder every so often too. Like I've, I've recently heard myself saying, Oh, I'm just a mom or I'm just a whatever. And I, I have to remind myself, like, think about what you actually spoke about you are not just a mom. You're a mom, for one thing, period, end of story, you know, um, but so many other hats. And I just feel like in today's day and age, um, it's really easy for moms to think that they, well, it's really easy to buy into the fact that you're not an important job because you're not being paid. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have any bearing on whether or not you are doing important work on how much you're being paid. Just the fact that you are, I mean, you're raising the next generation. So you gotta, you gotta believe in what you're doing and know that it's, it's the most important work. So I just wanted moms to feel that, that empowerment, you know? Yeah. Awesome. They need to hear that as much as possible. Yeah. Um, how long did it take you to memorize your presentation? <laughs> <laughs> a long was time. Most impressive with TED Talk. Holy cow. It was, it was hard, really hard. So what I would do is I, I, I think I learned this from the coordinator. Um, Kat is her name. And I would record myself. I think I recorded myself saying it, like reading it maybe. Mm -hmm. And then I would listen to myself in the car, like saying it over and over again. And then in the car, I would, as I was driving, I would record myself over and over again saying it. So um, I utilize that time in the car that usually can be just a complete waste of time. Even though you're going from point A to point B, 
you know, you're not being productive within that time. And, and I figured why not use it in the car? And, and there was no judgment because no one else was around me. So I could actually get confident in what I needed to say and the transitions, because I think the transitions are the hardest part, like figuring out, like, you know, you have one little segment that you talk about something, but it's trying to figure out how to segue into the, yeah. the other parts. So it was really about learning what the transitions were. Um, but I mean, it, it was such a cool process. And another thing that I'm super thankful to yeah. have been a part of. So awesome. I loved it. So you also have a book, um, Happily Ever After, and it's interesting. Um, it's about gratitude. Yeah. And um, we've talked about gratitude a lot on this show. I noticed in the um, clip for your book on your website that you mentioned that something happened with your cousin that made you more grateful and it kind of was a pivot point in your life. Um, I thought that was really interesting because I had the same exact experience when I lost my cousin when I was young and I always relate to that because it was like a turning point in my life where I realized that nobody was guaranteed any amount of time on earth that you had to take you know every day as a gift and don't take it for granted so I thought that was so interesting do you want to kind of talk about yeah sure talk about that Um, yeah I was home from college I think I was a freshman or a sophomore and um it was over the summer and we got a phone call i feel like it was pretty late at night and he had been he raced go-karts and he had been in a go-karting accident and it was it was pretty bad i mean he was wearing a helmet but the accident he fell and he got run over um by another go-kart so um so we immediately jumped on a plane and headed to Indiana from St. Louis. And, uh, you, you know, when you're that age, when you're in college, unless you've experienced a significant loss, you really don't like, I feel like all children and they should feel this way. Um, they feel like they can't be touched. You know, they're untouchable. They are gonna live for forever. It, nothing's gonna happen to them, even though, even if it's happening to their neighbor or whatever, you just don't feel, you feel like death is gonna, something that will happen to your grandparents, you know, um, or your great grandparents or whatever at that point in time. So it definitely affected me in that it made me realize that life was short and you never know what's going to happen no matter how old you are if you're 21 or if you're two or if you're 74 you know like the it was definitely a wake-up call to um start to really think about that and not be fearful of it i mean there's there you know we all are going to die and and it's it's a scary thing when you're young and to be faced with your mortality but I think it's um, it was an important lesson for me to learn that I I needed to be grateful for every day and try to um, appreciate the relationships in my life and um, and know that you know it can it it can all come to a close. But just continue to live live the best way that you can because you never know when your last day is is coming. Okay. Do you have a, like, how do you specifically incorporate gratitude into your everyday life? Is there anything specific you do or is it just a thought process? Um, you know, since I wrote the book, which was a while ago, I feel like it was about five, six years ago. Um, I used to do my fave part of the day, which I would post on Twitter every day. And I've since stopped doing that. But what I do still do is with my kids. So every, every night at bedtime, um, we have a routine. We say our prayers. Um, I ask them what their magic words are, which um, is kind of like from the book, uh, The Help, or the movie, The Help, where they, she says. Oh, you're kind. You're yeah, kind. exactly. I so I, I adopted that really when they were really young and we've done it ever since. And so they say those and then I ask them what their favorite part of the day was. Um, so I, I try to incorporate it into that. I want them to have to think about their day and think of something positive. 
that that happened and it's usually recess or lunch or hockey practice or dance or whatever <laughs> whatever a sleepover i don't know um so it's usually the same but at least they're ending the, their day on a on a good note you know yeah i love that i love i didn't i never knew it was called magic words it wasn't on oh, the help i i named it yeah. that yeah yeah. Okay. There's been times in my daughter's life when she's having a rough day and I'll repeat that, those, those lines that she said to the, um, in the movie. And we just laugh because there is something that just makes you feel better. If somebody gives you words of affirmation when you're having a terrible day. So I love that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what, tell us a little bit about, um, now that the kids are a little bit older, what does a typical day kind of look like for you right now at this point in your life? Oh, well, um, I just lost my carpool. So <laughs> now I'm driving to school every day. <laughs> um, we, I usually, I get up, I get the kids up, I get them breakfast, help them make their lunches, make sure their computers are charged. Oh my God. I just realized, I don't think I, I don't think I sent my computer with my daughter. Oh, are no. they in person school right now? Oh no, no, they're at school. Yeah, every day? Every day. Okay. Yeah, awesome. actually at school. So yes, we drive to school. Um, yeah. So, oh gosh, I'm gonna be in so much trouble. Um, so anyway, I, you know, I get them to school and then after they're at school, then I can do the me stuff, which is, um, you know, work or I, I am the fundraising director for our hockey club. So I do a lot with that. Um, uh, working out, going to see friends, um, you know, that sort of thing. That's kind of my, my typical day, just cleaning up the house, doing laundry, doing all the mom things. Um, and then, uh, after school is really when it kicks into gear because I got to pick them up, take them to dance, take them to dinner, figure out dinner. Although Ryan, so like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I told him how overwhelmed I was with, um, I was so stressed out. And it was around dinner time, and I have always hated cooking. Always. I love baking. I do not like cooking. Yeah. And um, I just told him, I was like, I'm just stressed. Like, it's really stressful to have to come up with dinner, go buy it, prepare it, <laughs> cook it, serve it, and then get all the judgment for no one liking it or whatever. <laughs> so he actually has taken over the reins of cooking dinner when he's home. So he works as a Denver firefighter now, he commutes. So he works 24 hour shifts. And, and when he's home for those two days in between, like he, it's 24 on, 48 off. Yeah. Um, he's been cooking. So that is one less thing that is part of my everyday um, load, which has been amazing. Like seriously, I'm falling so much more in love with yeah. him because he's stepped up to the point. Ladies, right? Big points. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it's just the after school grind after that, getting them to their activities, um, trying to be productive, you know, as much as possible. But, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of all about, uh, chauffeuring them around yeah. these days, and, but I'm really thankful because I, I, COVID or quarantine was really hard when they yeah. were going to school and, and I feel like it is so much more beneficial to them to be in school with their friends, in front of their teachers. 100%. All the things. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I hear you on that. The one, I think the thing I missed the most during quarantine was watching my kids play sports. I realized that how totally such a big part of our life and my husband and I love it. Yeah. And I was like, well, and that's part of my social life. You become friends with all these parents. So it's just like, well, you're not seeing anybody because there's no sports. Totally so, true. Yes, yeah. I agree. We're still not totally back to that here in New York. Some things are on and some things are off. So we're waiting for it to get back to normal. Yes. Good luck. Good yeah. Luck. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to wrap up in a minute, but I really, so you are coming out with a podcast. I, think, I have, yeah. It's out um, this week. Uh, we we wanted to put it out once it was searchable on uh, you know the podcast yeah. apps. Yeah, and we're at that point. So yay! Tell us about it. So what's your vision for this podcast? What's it going to be about? 
So um, it is, it's, it's called Better Etc. And uh, the et cetera is just ETC. So when people are searching for it, it's just at better, et cetera, ETC. Um, it is all about being better. So during quarantine, mm -hmm. when we were all stuck at home, everyone in this house was on edge as everyone around the world was on edge. You know, everyone's stressed out. I had a really short fuse. I feel like my kids were emotional. Like it was, it was just hard for everybody in, in the world and in this house for sure. Yeah. So um, Max and I got into an argument. No idea what the argument was about right now. I cannot remember, but I walked away from it thinking I need to be better. And it, and the light bulb, that's when the light bulb went off and I thought, I need to be better and I want to be better. And I bet there are so many people around the world who want to be better with me, you know? So, um, I had, I had a couple years ago been approached by a bunch of different people. You need to do podcasts. You need to, you need to do podcasts. Like everyone's like do a podcast. And I don't know. It just felt forced because at that point in time, I wanted to focus on parenting because that was my main focus. Um, and it still is. Right. But it was, it was really like we were having the, the sex talks, the porn talks, the drugs talks, like the big talks. Mm -hmm. I feel like when your kids are mini, you're trying to keep them alive, to yeah. keep them happy, you know, and there's certain things like I'm really good with babies, really good with babies, teenagers, maybe not so much. And I need all the help I can get. And so I was going to focus on that. And I just got a lot of like maybe you don't want to go that route because that pigeonholes you and, and whatever. And I'm like, and there's so many of them out there. So I was like, if you're not like you who have been around for when podcasts kind of first started, um, I just felt like it would be an uphill battle. And I just got all this negative feedback and it really felt forced. Mm -hmm. It felt like I was trying too hard. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if something, if you feel like you're trying too hard, maybe it, that's a sign. Yeah. So, um, so I put it on the back burner and then this conversation with Max happened and I thought, I think this is it. So I looked up if better, et cetera, was taken and it wasn't. And I reached out to this production team, podcast nation that, um, I had been in talks with before and they were all about it. So it's really just about being better. And I want to focus on anything and everything that you can be better at. So um, like my first, sorry, I'm, I'm like being blinded by, um, ah, that's better. Um, so my first guest is Ryan and I wanted people to kind of get to know him a little bit better. And he, which I, I felt like, you know, people who have followed us and are, are fans of um, when we were on the show, um, I feel like they'll appreciate that. They, they want to know him. And so he shares his motto and um, kind of how he's gone through this career changes over the past few years um, and how he is back to uh, living his life of purpose. Um, he has found his purpose again. So we talk about living a life of purpose. Um, I'm going to have Kat Sadler on will be uh, my next guest after that. She was an entertainment reporter at E! News for 12 years. We actually went to college together and I wanted to talk to her about how to better handle breakups, um, whether professional or personal, because she's had She's had two divorces and recently broke up with her boyfriend. So I felt like she would be able to offer great insight in terms of that. Um, the next one is um, Kelly Wolf, who is, uh, she was on Real World New Orleans. Um, she's married to Bailey from Party of Five. I don't know if you watch that show. Um, he is now on Nancy Drew. He's an actor, Scott Wolf. Um, and she's a life coach and she talks about um, her uh, mechanism of flow. It's finding love over worry. So just living a happier life through that. Mm -hmm. So they're all, all different topics. I'm going to be, I'm going to be talking about heavy stuff. I'm going to, I want to talk about light stuff. I mean, whether it's talking about how to help our kids um, 
not feel like suicide is the answer and yeah. how to um, be a better listener and how to cook a better lasagna. I don't know. Like I, <laughs> I feel like there are so many things. So many. So, so many. And I feel like people, you know, since I put it out there, Friends and family have reached out and said, ooh, you need to have this guest on, or I just read this book from this guy, and oh, you should have him on, or whatever. So people are coming, coming at me mm -hmm. with all these great ideas, stuff that I want to know, you know, that I feel like, part. You I know, part. and so I'm so yeah. excited. Like, it really is, like, I was depressed, I was stressed out, I was for so long and, and quarantine really hurt, um, my mental health, mm -hmm. um, well-being. Um, so I just people. feel like, right. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I'm just drawn to positive things right now. I don't watch the news. I, I try, even though part of my job is social media, I try to stay off of social media as much as possible. <laughs> Oh, it's crazy. But I, I just feel like there's so much negativity and divisiveness in the world right now. And I just want to put something out there to spread positivity and bring us all together. And I feel like, who are we if we're not trying to be better? Like, I, I feel like everyone can use a little bit of improvement in their lives, um, whether it's fun loving improvement, like on just silly stuff or the heavy topics that, um, we all could learn from yeah. the experts on. I think so, in general, too, most people um, that are listening to podcasts are listening to learn something that improves their life. True, you're right. You know, yeah. I mean, that's what I what I'm looking for. Whether it be that I'm in the mood to look, listen to parenting advice that day, or spiritual advice, or financial yeah. advice, it depends what my mood is. But I'm looking, I'm searching based on ways to get better. So I love you it. Are so right. You are so right. That's so true. I haven't ever thought about it like that, but, and there are a lot of podcasts that focus on being better. And I love listening to those. I'm just trying, I just want to be able to, to join in that. And I feel like there's room for all of us. And, right. um, even though I'm late to the game, I really am hopeful for it. And I'm really excited, like selfishly and personally really excited because I want to learn from all of these people and I want to become a better version of myself. So why not actually be the host of what is out, what, what is trying to do that for other people and learn on my own. As Absolutely. Well. And you get to ask the questions, right? <laughs> so you yes, what you're learning. <laughs> I, know, I love it. It's, it's great. So fun. It's probably my most fun hat I wear. Um, and awesome. I love that. Yes. And people are so interesting. So it's so fun to just be able to talk to people and have conversations. And, right. and I think podcasts are amazing because you don't have to sit down and watch it. And a lot of women are so busy, they can't sit down and watch anything, but they can still get the information and inspiration just while they're listening and cleaning the house or driving in a car, um, whatever they're doing. So it's, it's awesome. I listen to them every single day. Yeah, same. I'm, I'm starting to just because um, I'm starting to love them more, but also I'm like researching, you know, <laughs> I feel like, oh, that's an interesting topic. I need to listen to this to see if I could, you know, have someone on to speak about it as well. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really pumped up about it. Um, I, I, you know, my book was when I wrote my book, I wanted to write it to leave a positive impact and kind of form this legacy that, um, I could leave for my kids. And I feel like this is, this is a, a the next part of that legacy. Well, I wish you the best of luck, Trista. Thank you. I'll be definitely tuning in because I'm a podcast junkie. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I'd love to return the favor at some point and have you on. So yeah, um, absolutely. Anytime. Um, well, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to be on the 29 minute mom. I'm so glad we finally got you on. And, I know. and you know, just as I expected, you're just as real as it gets. And um, I really appreciate that. We love to have just authentic conversations here. So um, I just wish you the best with everything you're doing. And um, you know, it's, I'm just 
thrilled watching you on that show leading up to now. The best part about it is that you're still married and you have these yeah. beautiful, healthy children. So um, I'm always rooting for, you know, it seems like nowadays more than ever, there's not a lot of people married for, you know, over 15 years and worse, we just celebrated 21. So I'm always proud of it. Other people, you know, yeah. that gets that same point. So good for you. Um, and thanks, you know, and we just wish you the best for your kids and Ryan and, you know, your career and your life together. And it's great talking with you and, you know, meeting <laughs> so, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye everybody. Bye everybody <laughs> who watched today. Thanks for joining us for the 29 minute mom.